Hare Krishna, welcome to all the devotees for our Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Verses 6 to 15, Part 1. Just sound check, everyone can hear the sound. Sound good, thank you very much. Okay, just... Right, let us offer the prayers. Om Jnana Timi Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Nguruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utaparakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Tam Spitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Dev Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dinabando Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patita Nampa Venebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sarva Shastra Biyusha Sarva Vedeka Satvala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya Sarva Lokaitri Prada Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kali Dvando Dida Titya Shri Krishna Parivartita Oshmad Bhagavatam O nectar churn from the ocean of all Vedic scriptures, O most prominent transcendental fruit of all the Vedas, O you enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophic conclusions, O you grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world, O life breath of the Vaishnava devotees, O Lord, you are you are the sun which is this, you are the sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned amongst us. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varsha Sharayate Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namastute Oshimud Bhagavatam Offer my respectful obeisance unto you. By reading you one attains transcendental bliss. For your syllabus rain pure love God upon the hero, upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are incarnation of Lord Krishna. Madeka Bandu Mat Sangim Mad Guru Mad Mahadana Manishtarka mad bhagya mad ananda namastute. O Shriman Bhagavatam, O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my bless, O my good fortune, O my bliss, offer my respectful obeisances 
unto you. Asadu sadu tadahi nati ni chochataraka hana munchakada chinmam premna ritkata yospura. O Shimad Bhagavatam, O give of saintliness to the unsaintly, who uplift the very fallen. Please do not ever leave me. Please become manifest in Mahatma Tro, the company of pure love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yaton Vayaditarata Charte Swabigna Swara Tene Brahma Hidaya Dikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya Tejo Vari Mridam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargom Risha Dwana Damna Swena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam param dimahi. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudev, O son, O all pervading personality of Godhead, offer my respectful obeisance unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of creation, sustenance, and destructions of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations, and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion, as one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifest by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is the eternally existent in transcendental abode which is forever free from the loser representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Prayanal paisha sabya kalav asmin yuge jana manda sumanda matayo madhabhagya upadrta. O learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Narayan namaskrityam narocheva narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojaya Udirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of God at Naran Narayan. Under the personality of God at Narayan, unto Naran Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Shila Vyasadev, the author. Savai Pum Soparo Dharmo Yato Bhakti Radoksha Jay Ahitukiya Pratihata Yayatma Suprasiddhati. The supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which man can attain to loving devotional service and to the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayatyasuvairagyam Gyanam Chayat Ahutikam. By rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless, causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Vedantita tattva vidas tattvam jnanam tattvam yaj jnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti sabhyate Learner transcendentalists who know the absolute truth calls non-dual substance brahman, parampam, paramatma or bhagavan. Shushru shro shradhanasya vasudeva kata ruchi syan mahatsevaya vipra punya tirta nishevanat O twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely free from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains a fernity for your hearing the messages of Vasudev. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ryatyanta Stoya Badrani Vidunati Suritsatam. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart and a benefactor of a truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtues when properly heard and chanted. By regular attendance in the class on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of God who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
We are going, continuing Srimad Bhagavatam, based on the teachings of the Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So just some feedback, let us recap what we covered and what uh, you took home from verses uh, 1 to 5, Canto 1, Chapter 2. You can either unmute if you want, uh, or if you want, you can uh, just please type in the chat. Also, for those that are on uh, YouTube, you can also type into uh, the chat there. All right, so please share what you took home from last week's lesson. Okay, Nalini Kanti Prabhu said, Srila Prabhupada said, get out, both of us, for both of us. Yeah, so mm, that uh, was a very strong statement that Srila Prabhupada uh, repeated a few times, three times at least in the one purport. Uh, that uh, we need to leave this material world. It is not a fit place for any living entity to be in this world, especially if one knows the what is in the spiritual world and what they're missing. Mm-hmm. So therefore, naturally, the pure devotees uh, are very, very strong mm-hmm. in these uh, statements. Even uh, Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur in his song, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gaura Chandra Bali. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, wake up sleeping souls, wake up sleeping souls. You are sleeping on the witch of Maya. So like that, uh, there are very strong statements to encourage us to leave. Uh, Mother Lash said, Srimad Bhagavatam is for getting out of material existence, not for material gain or sense pleasure or obtaining mystic powers. Yes, it is uh, a scripture that is uh, kicking out all other forms of Dharma that Bhagavatam classifies as Ketava, cheating. Anyone, Amada Acharya Siddhi says, anyone can be born in any situation, but if we embrace the appropriate Brahminical qualities, we can become qualified. Very true. Our main goal is to get out of the material world. Yes, Hare Krishna. This world and the body is Dukalem. So be convinced to get out now. But while here, take shelter of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Yes, while you here in the material world, make best use of a bad bargain. Uh, in fact, take advantage, and we're going to be covering that even uh, not in this section, not in uh, today's, but definitely it'll come up in next week's class, um, to take advantage of the opportunity that really exists only in the material world. And that is to bring people to the shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. That only exists in the material world. So that service is very unique, very special. And while we become convinced uh, to leave this world, we can take advantage of spreading Krishna consciousness and um, taking advantage of that opportunity. It is not negotiable that in this material world, we can be happy just as no happiness uh, just that is no that yes, there is no happiness in this material world. There's no bliss in this material world. Uh, there is flickering happiness, chapala sukha, but there's definitely no bliss, which is what the living entity is seeking for. Uh, Sham says, Hare Krishna, by remembering uh, Guru, Vaishnav, and the Lord, all obstacles are destroyed, and one quickly attains fulfillment of all desires. Yes, and an Uttama Bhagavat is already a Brahmana. Correct. A Vaishnav is already a Brahmana. And by remembering the Lord, the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas, uh, this remembrance is very conducive. Uh, we should not take it lightly. Remembering any devotee uh, and the Lord's and his pastimes are very, very powerful. Nevertheless, said, if we have no pleasure in chanting, then keep chanting uh, to be cleansed. Yes, uh, we may not have taste in the beginning, uh, but we should continue associate with those that have taste. Just like Prabhupada says, if you want to become a drunkard, no problem. Just associate with someone who is expert at drinking. And in that way, uh, he will coach you, guide you, and he will inspire you, and you'll get a taste to drink. Word is, the world is full of questions and answers, but only those relating to Krishna give full satisfaction of the self. Yes, correct, wonderful. And that's uh, the point that we actually going to start off this uh, session with. So uh, we're going to cover these sets of verses from 6 to 15 uh, in uh, two classes because of the importance of uh, 
uh, these verses, I'm not going to rush and I'm trying to focus on uh, today we're going to cover till uh, text 10 um, from 6 to 10. So 6 and 7, um, Sudha Goswami is going to answer the top two questions, first two questions, what is the ultimate good and the essence of all scriptures. And we mentioned that the ultimate good Shreyas, this is the ultimate good. And if we understand and convinced about this, then we can uh, have other goals, sub goals, uh, prayers, uh, immediate goals that will align to the ultimate goal. And then we're going to cover eight to 10, which is occupational duties and their goals. Uh, we are in this material world. Uh, we have a material body. Uh, we have uh, impressions that we've come to this world with from our past lives. And therefore, we have a certain inclination, a certain nature. Mm. And we may be in different positions, mm. student, married, renounced, etc. Uh, what and how do we apply ourselves so that they align to the ultimate good mm. and they don't uh, become, uh, we don't sabotage ourselves in order to achieve the ultimate goal. So that is what we're going to discuss today from the verses of the Bhagavatam. So in the previous verse, or in following this section, uh, one to five, Sudha Goswami, he was very pleased with the questions of the sages. And he said, Yet krita krishna sam prashno yatma supraseddhati that your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. And in one lecture, Srila Prabhupada, he gave a different twist to this specific verse or specific response by Sutta Goswami, which uh, I felt very uh, and it was very interesting, and I thought I'll share that in terms of questions. So Srila Prabhupada in his lecture in Vrindavan says, So Krishna Samprashna, if you want to make the whole world peaceful, yatma suprasiddhati, suprasiddhati, prasiddhati means to become satisfied, and su means super, extra satisfied, just like uh, Mother Subhadra. Uh, Badra means auspicious. And whenever you put a Sanskrit word su, then it's amplified, extra, su Badra, uh, completely uh, auspicious, extremely ex uh, auspicious. Or darshan means to see, su darshan, mm -hmm. extremely uh, beautiful to see. All right. Then people should be educated to inquire about Krishna. That's all. Simply, this very word, ya krit krishna samprashna, makes such propaganda in a way that everyone becomes inquisitive. What is this nonsense? Krishna, they are speaking, at least. So here Prabhupada is making an interesting point. He's saying, generally, you know, those who are interested in Krishna consciousness, they will speak about Krishna, and there'll be questions related to Krishna. So that is very good. But probably saying make propaganda in such a way that everyone becomes inquisitive. That means those who are Krishna conscious, those who are favorable, uh, they will uh, want to uh, hear about Krishna. But uh, those who, those people who are not interested in Krishna conscious, they may be demonic in nature. Mm -hmm. They should also be inquiring. And what, how they'll be inquiring? Prabhupada gives an example. What is this nonsense, Krishna, are they speaking? And even if these uh, demonic people or those who are not interested in Krishna cons, they ask, what is this nonsense? I don't believe in this Krishna business. You know, you people are all, you know, you people don't know what you're doing. This Krishna business is not, is not, is not authentic. Whatever they're saying. Because they are presenting or arguing and it's arguing in relation to Krishna, it is yayatma suprasiddhi. It is wonderful. And Prabhupada gives the example of Jagayan Madai in his lecture. He says, just like Jagayan Madai, 
when they, in the beginning, they were very much averse, adverse to Sankirtan, Hari Sankirtan. But one day, Madai was telling to Jagai, my dear brother, Jagai, after all, these rascals sing very nicely. Prabhupada laughs. Hare Krishna. They, uh, they sing very nicely. Hare Krishna. They sing, uh, oh, you are going to be a Vaishnav. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be a Vaishnav. I'm just appreciating. They sing very nicely. So you do like that. They will arrest you. You have got good experience. In London, they were arrested. You were in London. How many times you were arrested? Kuruda says three. Prabhupada, three times. Our record is that our people were arrested 36 times. They, now the police has become disgusted. They don't arrest. Yes. But this thing is going on in Australia, especially in Melbourne. I've got uh, received. So they asked me what to do. To do? Chant Hare Krishna. And you, and you get good opportunity. When you, put, when you are put into jail, you'll be free to chant Hare Krishna. So, that, so they are doing that. They are not eating. The minister in charge of jail department, he was perturbed that these people are not eating. And they are allowed to do. You cook, you can cook. But they refuse because the same kitchen they're cooking. I mean to say flesh. So, refuse. And so, and, and so then after a few days, uh, they were let loose. All right, you go home. Yes. So this is going on. So Prabhupada uh, gave a very uh, wonderful way to see this verse uh, that it doesn't matter. Therefore, Prabhupada said, good news or bad news? If it's in relation to Krishna, it's always good news. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the world when there will be bad, bad propaganda newspaper, uh, Prabhupada uh, and Srila Bhakti Samaj also, they would just see how many times Krishna is mentioned in the bad article and they would be very happy. Yes, uh, that's how many times uh, they are. Uh, chanting Krishna's name. So, all auspicious. Why? Krishna is there. So, text 6 of chapter 2, verse 1. So, this is now answering. Uh, Sudha Goswami is answering the first question. Savaipum so paro dharmo yato bhakti radoksha jay ahoy tuki apratihata yatma suprasiddhati The supreme occupation, dharma, for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devo devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. So the answer to the first two questions, uh, Sudha Goswami starts with Savai Pumso Pumsam Paro Dharma. The supreme occupation, dharma for humanity. Uh, there are many dharmas in this world. Everyone has different dharmas in this world. But these dharmas are not paro dharma. They're not supreme dharma. Uh, they are a paro. Uh, in some cases, they are a materialistic dharma. And here are a list of some of the dharmas. Uh, there's uh, desha dharma of different regions. There's jati dharma of social groups, there's kula dharma of different families, uh, there's ashram dharma according to your different ashram. If you are a student, you have different brahmachari, you have certain uh, duties, certain dharma you have to follow, uh, code of conduct, you are kriyasta, you have to do certain things. There's dharma for women, stri dharma, uh, there's varna dharma, and then there's patni dharma for those uh, who are uh, uh, wives, uh, there's a certain dharma, there's pati dharma, if your husband is a certain dharma, raja dharma, rashtra dharma, mm -hmm. the king has a dharma, this nation has dharma, so there are so many dharmas. Mm -hmm. In fact, it described there are uh, close to 20 to 100 different scriptures just focusing on uh, the different classific or 20 to 100 different types of dharmas uh, that are there, and different scriptures presenting these different dharmas. But uh, the highest occupation, the supreme most occupation for humanity mm, is described in this verse. And Prabhupada starts off the uh, purport by saying in this statement, Srila Sudha Goswami mm, answers the first question of the sages of Namishavanya. The sages asked him to summarize the whole range of the revealed scriptures and present the most essential part 
so that the fallen people or the people in general might easily take it up. The Vedas prescribe two different types of occupation for human beings. One is called Pravritti Mag, or the path of sense enjoyment, and the other is called Nivritti Mag, or the path of renunciation. The path of enjoyment is inferior, and the path of sacrifice for the supreme cause is superior. Material existence of the living being is a diseased condition of actual life. Actual life is spiritual existence of Brahma Buddha, Srimad Bhagavatam 430.20 existence, while life in eternal, where life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Material existence is temporary, temporary, illusory, and full of miseries. There is no happiness at all. There is just the futile attempt to get rid of miseries and temporary cessation of miseries is falsely called happiness. Therefore, the path of progressive material enjoyment, which is temporary, miserable and illusory is inferior. But devotional service to the Supreme Lord, which leads one to eternal blissful and all cognition life is called superior quality of occupation. So, um, so the highest occupation, the paradharma, uh, the supreme occupation that every person can uh, engage in is yato bhaktir adokshaja, is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. So devotional service to the Supreme Lord, this is uh, the ultimate good. This first statement, uh, paro dharma, is also classified as sadhana bhakti. Uh, bhakti uh, in the practicing stage, vaidi sadhana bhakti. And this Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti also leads to Yato Bhaktir Adokshaje, Bhava Bhakti, pure devotional service. So performing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, which then leads to pure devotional service, this is a superior quality of occupation. The word Adokshaje, Prabhupada defines that. Ada means down, made down or defeated. Krishna's another name is Adokshaja. Ada. Ada means down, made down, or defeated. Mm -hmm. Your sense perception will be defeated. If you want to realize God by your imperfect sense perception, that is not possible. You will be defeated. Ada. Akshaja. Akshaja means Aksha. Aksha means eyes. So you cannot see the Supreme Lord with your mundane, blunt senses. Mm -hmm. The way we see the Supreme Lord is by hearing. In one lecture, Srila Prabhupada said that the materialists, they see with their eyes. The dog, he sees with his nose. And the devotees, they see with their ears. So we see the Supreme Lord with our ears. And another statement that Srila Prabhupada made here in this purport, which is also very, very pertinent for us. Material existence of the living entity is a diseased condition of actual life. So we should understand the fact that I'm in this material world, the fact that I have a material body means I'm diseased. I am spiritually diseased. Spiritual disease means that I need to become cured. I need to be, regain spiritual health. As I progress on the path of devotional service, I will regain spiritual health. And I will know that I have become completely healthy when I have no material body. I have no material false ego. Uh, I have no material anartas or obstacles, uh, lust, anger, greed, jealousy, envy, madness, illusion, etc. So that's when I'm actually healthy. So we can use this. Just like if somebody is you know, physically uh, with ill health, he can measure. He's feeling very uneasy, feeling sore throat, or you know, he's got mucus, or he's coughing, uh, or he's got pain. Um, so as he heals himself, he can, he can understand. He, he's realizing that I'm getting better or I'm getting worse. Similarly, spiritually also, we can measure. Am I getting better or I'm getting worse? Then uh, we know now that the ultimate good is bhakti adokshaja, devotional service. Now, what is the quality of that bhakti? What should the quality of that bhakti be? That Devotional service, ahitukhi, ahitukhi, pratyata. And such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. 
unmotivated means no material desires, no mundane motive. Generally, people perform uh, devotional service for some material gain. Uh, and here, dharma, many people perform dharma also for material gain. They would have some religious practice, uh, prayers for some material gain. But uh, we want to practice devotional service with no ulterior motive, no mundane uh, motive. Right? It shouldn't be for some self-centered agenda, but simply uh, to please Krishna. Because Krishna Prabhupada says in the purport, I'm part and parcel of Krishna, therefore I need to serve Krishna. And uninterrupted mm, means uh, no, cess no cessation, should be continuous. Right? There are also a uh, few other uh, ways of interpreting this, uh, which we will share just now. For example, Robert says in the purport, adoption of devotional service or material gain is certainly an obstruction to the progressive path of renunciation. Renunciation or, abneg or abnegation for ultimate good is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the disease condition of life. Such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. So when one has this propensity to enjoy separately from Krishna, it increases your spiritual disease. And because your disease is increased, uh, then the duration of your suffering is increased. Therefore, devotional service to the Lord must be pure in quality. And what is that pure in quality? without the least desire for material enjoyment. One should therefore accept the superior quality of occupation in the form of devotional service of the Lord without any tinge of unnecessary desires, fruit of actions, or philosophical speculation. This alone can lead one to perpetual solace in his service. So we should always question, what is my intention for rendering service to the Supreme Lord? Uh, do I want something material in return, or is it simply for the pleasure of Krishna? In the lect few lectures, Prabhupada talks about ahutiki. Uh, real devotional service must be without cause, Prabhupada says. And that devotional service should be ahutiki, no hetu. Hetu means cause. I'm going to the temple with some cause for mitigation of, my, of some difficulties. I shall pray too. This is also nice, but this is not a hituki. There is some hetu or cause. We should serve Krishna without any cause. And that, and not that by serving Krishna, I shall improve my material position or uh, many causes maybe. No. But real service, real devotional service must be without cause. And this, uh, ahituki devotional service, this attracts Krishna. Mm. When there's some mundane uh, reason, uh, then it spoils, just like having some sweet rice. And sweet rice is very delicious, very nectarian. But if I got stones in it uh, and I eat that uh, and I bite onto the stone, then that spoils the sweet rice. So material motives in one's prayers, in one's devotional practice, in one in one spiritual practice, this taints. This uh, uh, is unpalatable. Pure devotee is satisfied only with service of the Lord, but a pure devotee does not accept even all these liberations. They don't ask for liberation. Pure devotee is satisfied only with service of the Lord. That is pure devotion, because there is no desire. This that is explained here. Ahitiki pratyata. Oh. I am engaged in Krishna consciousness because after death, death, I shall go back home, back to Godhead. Of course, that's a fact. But a pure devotee even does not desire that. He says, when, wherever Krishna will keep me, I shall remain there. It doesn't matter whether heaven or hell. I don't care. I don't care for it. It is not business. It's not, it is not business with you, Krishna. It's not, a, it's not a business deal with Krishna. I am your eternal servant. This is pure devotee, ahituki, no reason. It is my duty. That is occupational duty. It is my eternal occupation to serve you. And these are the highest ideas of pure devotion. And we know Shichat Mahaprabhu also says, Nadanamna Janamna Sundarin. 
I don't want followers. I don't want money. I don't want women. I simply want causeless devotional service, birth after birth. Even if Krishna wants to bring me back to the material world, no problem. As long as I'm still serving uh, the Lord, that is uh, pure devotional service. Prabhupada says a neophyte in the beginning, the neophyte should uh, desire to go back home. Right? That should definitely be there for uh, uh, in the beginning stages. But as you advance, uh, then um, it doesn't matter. Going back, not going back, it doesn't matter. Uh, the goal is pure devotional service. Then apratyata, uninterrupted. So uninterrupted means constant. There's no interruption. It's not like I take a break. You know, I've been serving Krishna for like, you know, so long now I need to take a holiday. Uh, let me go for an excursion. Let me take a break. That is not pure devotional service. Uh, that is mix, Mishra Bhakti. Mm -hmm. So Mishra Bhakti, uh, devotional service can also be practiced uh, within uh, the realm of the three modes of material nature. We'll come, that, we'll come to that in the third canto as well, where Kapila Devi is going to describe. One can practice devotional service in the mode of ignorance, mode of passion, or in a mode of goodness. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have different results. So uninterrupted means constant. Prabhupada gives another definition of, un, of, upper, of uh, apratyata. There is nothing in the material world which can check one's devotional service. You are poor man, you are a woman, or you are sudra. No, apratyata. Whatever you may be, either you are poor man or rich man, black man or white man, or woman or man, it doesn't matter. Everyone has the right to serve Krishna, apratyata. There is nothing in the material world that can check one's devotional service. It is so pure and exalted. So Apratyata Prabhupada is giving uh, this point that it's, uh, uh, it cannot be checked. Any situation, no matter where or no matter what one is in, one can actually render uh, devotional service to the Supreme Lord. This is the glory of uh, devotional service. Now, if I practice this type of uh, parodharma, bhaktir uh, adoksha, apratyata, yayatma, suprasiddhi, suprasiddhi, then what is the result? Yayatma, suprasiddhi. Uh, I will get uh, complete satisfaction. Uh, it will completely satisfy uh, the self. Ahitukya pratyata. That type of devotional service will completely satisfy the self. And Prabhupada in the purport says, we have purposefully denoted dharma as occupation because the root meaning of dharma is that which sustains one's existence. A living being's sustenance of existence is to coordinate his activities with his eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna is the central pivot of the living beings and he is the all attractive living entity or eternal form amongst all living, living beings or eternal forms. Each and every living being has his eternal form in the spiritual existence. And Krishna is the eternal attraction for all of them. Krishna is the complete whole and everything else is his part and parcel. The relationship is one of servant and served. It is transcendental and is completely distinct from our experience in the material existence. This relationship of servant and, ser and the served is the most congenial form of intimacy. One can realize it as devotional service progresses. Everyone should engage himself in that transcendental loving service of the Lord, even in the present conditional state of material existence. That will gradually give one the clue to actual life and please him to complete satisfaction. So because we are part and parcel of Krishna, we have an eternal relationship with Krishna, and our eternal existence uh, is based, is founded, it's pivoted on the fact that I am part of Krishna, therefore I intend to serve Krishna. And, and when we cultivate this relationship, this relationship uh, will uh, manifest, will grow more and more intimately. And that intimate relationship with Krishna is what will completely satisfy uh, the self. Everything else in this material world will not satisfy one, but 
this relationship with Krishna. Prabhupada, in few lectures, uh, gives some very wonderful uh, points in relation to this complete satisfaction. Prabhupada says uh, that unless you learn this art, how to love God, you cannot be happy. This is in Delhi, Prabhupada says, supracidity. Everyone is wanting peace of mind. Atma means body. Atma means mind. So in the Sanskrit, uh, yayatma, supracidity. Uh, yayatma. Right? So Prabhupada is giving the word. Atma can mean body. Atma can mean mind. And Atma can also mean soul. So yayatma supracidity. Supracidity. Prasidity means become satisfied. And su means very much. So unless you learn this art, how to love God, you cannot be happy. That is the fact. Then in another lecture, Prabhupada says, so yayatma supracidity. Su means very much. Not only prasidity, but supracidity. Very much. Everyone. The body becomes satisfied. The mind becomes satisfied. The soul becomes satisfied. And the Supreme Paramatma. He also becomes satisfied. So that is called paro dharma. Paro dharma means. Para means superior. And dharma means occupational duty. So if one engages in devotional service, your mind, your body, uh, every aspect of your being and the Supreme Lord uh, will be satisfied. And another lecture, Prabhupada says, the real aim of life is how to get satisfaction, full, complete satisfaction. And that satisfaction, complete satisfaction, can be achieved only by prosecution of devotional service. There is no other method. If you want to be happy, free from all cares and anxiety, then you have to engage yourself in devotional service of the Lord. That will make you free from all material anxieties and all material miseries. So the ultimate good for all living entities uh, is Paro Dharma Bhaktir Adokshaja, to engage in devotional service. And if one engages in this devotional service with uh, the quality of um, uninterrupted and unmotivated, uh, then one will be one will experience complete satisfaction, complete misery, uh, and anxieties of this material world. So we have to become convinced that this is the ultimate goal. And I'll share. Uh, we find Sri Mahaprabhu. Uh, made it very clear that, which Prabhupada quotes in another lecture, so to love God is the ultimate. Chet Mahaprabhu has also said, Prema Pumarta Mahani, the supreme gain of life is how to satisfy, how to be situated in the platform of loving service to the supreme person, God. This is actual perfection. And we find all traditions, even in the Bible, to love thy Lord, with all thy might, heart, and soul. So this is the essence. This is the ultimate goal uh, and objective. And it's also the essence of all, in, of all the Vedas. This is the essential instruction. If we can remember this and become convinced of this and apply this in our life, our life will be perfect. So I'll give, share four uh, ex analogies, examples to just reinforce this point that we need to be convinced to love the Supreme Lord, to engage in devotional service. This should be our goal. This should be our focus. This should be our contemplation. Uh, this should be uh, our direction. The first one is a finger. Uh, if a finger is cut, then that finger has absolutely no value. And that finger is on the ground. Uh, you know, it's, if you know, somebody's walking and they see a finger, they're not gonna say, hey, Wonderful, there's a finger, spare parts. Let me pick it up, put it in my pocket. Uh, I'll keep it for spare parts. In case I something happens with my finger, I can put it. Nope. Uh, the person will say, I see somebody's finger. That finger has no value on the ground. It's useless. Mm -hmm. But if you cut your finger and it falls to the ground, immediately you want to pick it up and you want to go to the doctor and stitch it back to your hand. Right? So your finger when it's dislocated from your hand, has no value. It only has value when it's connected to your hand. Similarly, your hand also has value when it's connected to the body. Your body has value when it's connected to the soul. 
and this you, the soul, have value when you connect it to the supreme soul in loving devotional service. So if we're not connected to the supreme, then we know different from that useless finger that's on the ground. So we want to be valuable. We want to uh, experience that intimacy in connection to Krishna. Then in this material world, there is no pleasure. Just like if you're in a desert, there is absolutely no water around. And even if you get some drops of water, those drops of water is irrelevant. It does not quench your thirst. You need far more than just that drop of water. So in this material world, no matter what flickering happiness we get, we will never be satisfied. We will never be completely satisfied. We will only be completely satisfied in loving devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Therefore, we need uh, to search out um, that platform where we can engage in devotional service. Then um, in this material world, just like this person, um, he is trying to get the ring, which is actually on the tree, but he's trying to get the ring that is in the, sh in the reflection. And um, the sage, the sage or the sadhu, the devotees, the spiritual master, uh, they are witnessing this and they will tell us, or they will tell this youngster that actually uh, you're not going to be happy trying to catch that ring that's in the reflection. Why? Because there's no substance in that ring. There's no substance in the reflection. So the material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. There is no substance here. It looks real. It's real in terms of the material energy because it exists, but relative to the spiritual world, it has no substance to satisfy the soul. It has substance uh, for the uh, mind, material mind and material body, but not any substance for the soul. So we need to look up well, to the spiritual world. We need to look up um, to the Supreme Lord and our relationship with the Supreme Lord and engage in that devotional practice. And then Prabhupada would give this example that just polishing this material body, polishing the cage, this will not benefit the living entity. The living entity within this body, within this cage will die, spiritual suicide. He will not be nourished. So just as the body has its needs, the soul also has its needs. And the soul's ultimate need is pure devotional service. And this is the ultimate good for all humanity. And it is the essence of all instructions, all scriptures. In the past, in the present, and in the future. For all time. It's not like it'll change. A few years, 20 years, 30 years, we'll have a different ultimate goal. Or we'll have a different essential uh, understanding. No, these essential truths are for all time, for all place, for all circumstances, and for every living being. No exception. So if one practices devotional service in this way, then what is the result? So text 7 says, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayatya Suvairagyam Jnanam Chayad Ahoitakam by rendering devotional service unto the personality of God at Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. So Prabhupada in the purport says, generally, it is said that the bhakti cult is meant for the sudras, vaishyas, and the less intelligent class, woman class. But that is not the actual fact. The bhakti cult is the topmost of all transcendental activities. Therefore, it is simultaneously sublime and easy. It is sublime for the pure devotees who are serious about getting in contact with the Supreme Lord. And it is easy for the neophyte who are just on the threshold of the house of bhakti. To achieve the contact of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a great science. And it is open for all living beings, including the sudras, vaishyas, women, and even those lower than the low-born sudras. So what to speak of the high-class men like the qualified brahmanas and great self-realized 
kings. So devotional service is for all classes. It's not, uh, you know, that it's like, as Prabhupada says, many, some people have this notion that if you engage in bhakti, then it's like a very low class activity. No, but it's actually uh, said to be the highest level, highest platform. The principle of knowledge and detachment are two important factors on the path of transcendental realization. The whole pro spiritual progress leads to perfect knowledge of everything material and spiritual. And the results of such perfect knowledge are that one becomes detached from material affection and becomes attached to spiritual activities. Becoming detached from material things does not mean becoming inert altogether as men with poor fun of knowledge thinks. Nejkam, nejkam karma means not undertaking activities that will produce good or bad effects. Negation does not mean negation of the positive. Negation of non-essential does not mean negation of essential. Similar detachment from material form does not mean nullify positive form. The bhakti cult is meant for realization of the positive form. So as one is practicing devotional service, one will automatically get knowledge, and one will then apply that knowledge, would that knowledge be able to under discriminate effectively of what is conducive for bhakti and what is detrimental to bhakti, and then uh, be able to uh, practice in a detached spirit from material activities that bind one. So, gyan and vairagya are conducive uh, to progress more effectively on this path of uh, devotional service knowledge. And here we're not talking about uh, impersonal knowledge. We're talking about knowledge that is connected to Krishna. Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities. Uh, that knowledge, uh, knowledge in Bhagavatam, knowledge in Bhagavad Gita is very conducive for devotional service. In conclusion, one who is a pure devotee has all good qualities, namely knowledge, detachment, etc. But one who has only knowledge or detachment is not necessarily well acquainted with the principles of bhakti cult. Bhakti is the supermost occupation for human beings. One who is on this path of bhakti, he will have all refined spiritual qualities. And we see how Srila Prabhupada also was very expert uh, in dealing with all different individuals. Uh, he was always kind. Uh, very you know, gentle in his dealings with uh, those uh, who were innocent. Naturally, those who were uh, aggressive or rebellious, uh, Prabhupada would deal appropriately with them or even challenging, Prabhupada would deal with them. Uh, but otherwise, uh, with devotees, with well-wishers, uh, Prabhupada was very kind, very polite, um, because somebody who is practicing devotional service, uh, he will not uh, negate relationships that he has in this material world. In fact, those relationships, because of his uh, loving reciprocations, that those relations will become stronger and stronger and stronger. And those relationships are also, uh, will become stronger because Krishna is in the center of those relationships. It is not for exploitation. So form is not negated and uh, even using anything in the, that can be used in the service of Krishna is also not negated. So Gyan and Vairagya, Prabhupada in two lectures, Prabhupada shares and says, the first thing, Gyanam and Vairagya, this human form of life is meant for Gyanam and Vairagya. Gyanam means Vairagya, and Vairagya cannot be achieved without Gyanam. These two are relative terms. So Gyanam means that I'm not this body and my relationship with my body, they are also not my necessities. This is called jnana. And as soon as we understand that, this, that, the, that the simply necessities of my body are not required, that is called detachment or vairagya. So Prabhupada is putting it very nicely in this lecture that we know oxygen is necessary for the body. Therefore, we need oxygen. But for the soul, oxygen is not required. When one is practicing spiritual life, one begins to understand that one is not this body. And the relationships related to this body is not one's necessities. One's necessities, just like oxygen is to the body, 
one's the soul's necessity is Krishna and devotional service to Krishna. That is necessities, not anything else in this material world. Then another lecture Prabhupada says, so Krishna says that if you are engaged 24 hours in devotional service, then Krishna says from within, he will give all knowledge. Therefore, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita. If you actually engage in devotional service of Vasudev, then jnana and vairagya automatically becomes revealed unto you. There is no endeavor. So jnanam and vairagyam, the process of linking oneself with the Supreme is called yoga, which may be compared to a ladder for attaining the topmost spiritual realization. This ladder begins from the lowest material condition of the living entity and rises to the perfect self-realization in pure spiritual life. The more one's Krishna, the more one's knowledge of Krishna and Krishna consciousness increases, uh, the more one progresses on this ladder. And the more one uh, becomes detached from material sense gratification, the more one progresses. So these two are conducive for progressing in devotional service. But by practicing bhakti yoga, one automatically also develops and gets them. In regards to detachment, Srila Prabhupada gave the example of how uh, one, uh, you know, somebody would say uh, that I, you know, it's very difficult uh, to become free from material sense gratification, uh, just like uh, you know, watching television or, uh, you know, eating uh, food that is not uh, conducive for spiritual life. One student went to the guru and he told the guru, uh, Guru Maharaj, it's very difficult to become free from Maya. Uh, Maya is so powerful. You know, she's holding on to me. You know, I, it's, I, I, I can't give up Maya. It's, you know, she's, she's holding on and I can't, you know, it's very difficult to progress. Please help me. How can I give up Maya? So then, uh, the guru uh, told the disciple, you come tomorrow. So the next day, the disciple came to the guru's ashram and he saw the guru hugging uh, a tree. And the guru was saying, leave me, leave me, leave me. And the disciple, he thought this was quite strange. And the guru is hugging the tree and saying, leave me, leave me. So he couldn't hold himself. And he said, but Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, uh, the tree is not holding you. You're holding the tree. You can leave it. So immediately, uh, the guru left the tree and then came into uh, his ashram. And then he said, so you got your answer? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that you are holding on to Maya. Maya is not holding on to you. Mm -hmm. You're holding on to your attachments. The attachments are not holding on to you. So uh, for you to give them up, you need to let go. Mm -hmm. Now it's difficult for the living entity to let go. Therefore, devotional service is all about becoming attached to Krishna. Not letting Krishna go, but becoming attached. So you Letting go something by naturally attaching yourself to Krishna. Now, bhakti is independent. That means with jnana and vairagya, you don't get bhakti. Uh, but they are conducive uh, for you to progress on the path of bhakti. Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, one of our charyas, discusses this point and uh, he goes into detail showing that how. Bhakti is completely independent. And when, she, when a Bhakti and the personification of Bhakti, Shrimati Radhavani, when she becomes pleased, uh, then automatically uh, she will bestow pure devotion upon you. So association, devotee association does not give you devotion. Devotee association is one of the angas, one of the limbs of the stages of bhakti, which we'll cover in uh, two weeks' time. So, uh, Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, and Shraddha, after uh, faith, Sadhu Sangha is the second stage. So, it's one of the stages of bhakti. Then, follow, you know, charity, vows, austerity, selfless, selfless duties, uh, they don't give you bhakti. They may be conducive to get you on the path of suras, of, of, of uh, mode of goodness, uh, to then lead you further, but they don't give you bhakti. The Lord's mercy also does not give bhakti, because if the Lord uh, gives bhakti to some and others, that means he's partial. 
And in Bhagavad Gita, it's described, Krishna describes that he's uh, equal to all. So uh, Krishna also does not give bhakti. The Uttamadikari, he also does not give bhakti because Uttamadikari, he sees everyone equally. So he also cannot give bhakti. He's not partial. Hmm? So how is bhakti, how does bhakti come? Hmm? Firstly, it's ascribed that the Madhyamadikari, the middle, uh, the middle class devotee, hmm? he is able to distinguish between those, uh, between the Lord and the devotees, uh, those who are innocent and those who are inimical. And he's able to then uh, bestow uh, his mercy to those who are devotees or innocent. He's able to make friends with devotees, serve the Lord, and uh, be compassionate to those who are innocent. And that, uh, that's how those souls who are in this world get devotion. But he's only able to give them the devotion because that devotion is also in his heart. So ultimately, bhakti comes from bhakti. Devotion gives rise to devotion. And uh, this is how by pleasing the spiritual master, pleasing the devotees, pleasing the Lord, then bhakti becomes pleased. And when bhakti becomes pleased, uh, one gets further devotion. Then from text 8 to text 29, Sudha Goswami is going to describe the process of bhakti. Now in text 8, he's describing what do you do in the current situation. He's already described that the ultimate perfection is pure devotional service. And if you engage in pure devotional service, you'll be completely satisfied if it's uninterrupted and unmotivated. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, one practices this, automatically one gets Gyan and Vairagya. Now he says, Dharma Swanas Swanustita Pumsam Vikve Vik Vishvakshena Katha Katha Suya Notpada Yad Yadi Ratim Shrama Evahike Valam. The occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the personality of Godhead. So the perfection of our occupation is described in this verse. If I'm acting in all different, uh, in all different positions in uh, my life, according to my different uh, situation, um, what is the result? And Prabhupada in the purport says, there are different occupational activities in terms of man's different conceptions of life. To the gross materialists who cannot see anything beyond the gross material body, there is nothing beyond the senses. So you'll find the karma yogis, uh, or not well, they're not yogis, the karmis. Uh, the karmis, they're only interested in material sense gratification. Uh, so their goal is sense uh, gratification. To the gross materials who cannot see anything beyond the gross material body, there is nothing beyond the senses. Therefore, his occupational activities are limited to concentrated and extended selfishness. Concentrated selfish, selfishness centers around personal body. This is generally seen amongst the lowest animal, the lower animals. Extended selfishness is manifested in human society and centers around family, society, community, nation, and the world with a view to with a view to gross bodily comfort. Above these gross materialists are the mental speculators who hover aloft in the mental sphere and their occupational duties involve making poetry or philosophy or propagand propagating some ism with the same aim of selfishness limited to the body and the mind. But, uh, but, but above the body and the mind is the dormant spirit soul whose absence from the body makes the whole range of bodily and mental selfishness completely null and void. But, so, but less intelligent people have no information of the needs of the soul. So different occupation for different people according to uh, their perspective to life. But ultimately, Prabhupada is making the point that without the soul, all these things are null and void. All these things are useless. And so it's no use getting uh, all these different types of extended uh, sense gratification, 
whether it's mental or gross, uh, if the soul leaves, everything is wasted. Um, everything that you endeavored for in building this is wasted. It's like, it's like a sandcastle. A child is building this sandcastle, but the parents know that there's no value to the sandcastle. The child may be completely engrossed in the sandcastle mm, and he will become attached to the sandcastle. And when it's time to leave, then the parents will just break the sandcastle and naturally the child will become disturbed, child will become upset, but uh, they'll take him away. So like that, uh, we are building all these different sandcastles in this material world. Mm. And if they do not uh, lead to uh, attraction to the Supreme Lord, mm, then it's a total waste of time. Therefore, we have to engage ourselves in occupational engagement that will evoke our divine consciousness. This is possible only by hearing, enchanting the divine activities of the Supreme Lord and the occupational activities, which does not help one to achieve the attachment for hearing and chanting the transcendental message of Godhead is said year in to be simply a waste of time. This is because other occupational duties, whether whatever ism they may belong to, cannot give liberation to the soul. Even the activities of the salvationists are considered to be useless because of the, their failure to pick up the fountainhead of all liberties. So the fountainhead of all liberties, all uh, the uh, ultimate activity that will liberate everyone is attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, attachment to hearing and chanting transcendental message of Krishna. And by that attachment, we can uh, progress. So if one is engaging in any occupational activity, and if those occupational activities does not facilitate us becoming attached to Krishna through hearing and chanting, then shrava eva kevalam. That is a total waste of time. Therefore, we should use our occupation. We should use everything in this material world so that we can provide the facility and environment to hear and chant and become attached to Krishna. In uh, a lecture, uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, gave very nicely, Prabhupada uh, shares and says, so dharma swanus dharma swanus tita pumsam vish vekshena katha su ya not padaya yadi yadi ratim ratim means attachment this hearing process is very very important but people are not interested in hearing they are simply busy in some other duties my guru maj used to say one who was one who was not interested in hearing, he is called, uh, sorry, one who is not interested in hearing, he called, he used to call him a dandavat class, a dandavat class of men. That means simply he knows how to make dandavats. Dandavats mean uh, like we offer obeisances, like flat like a stick, like a danda, right? So dandavat, that's all. Anyone who will come to him, he would see, whether he is a Dandavat class of men or hearing class of men. So Dandavat eh, is nice, but by offering Dandavat, if one does not develop the intent of hearing, Shravanam, then he is not making much progress. So we don't want to be Dandavat devotees, just you know, engaging in service without hearing. Hearing is extremely important. And we will cover many verses in the Bhagavatam why hearing is uh, crucial for our bhakti to uh, grow, for our bhakti to be nurtured. Mm -hmm. Pra Prabhupada shares his own example. Mm -hmm. As you know, because I was little interested in hearing, my Guru Maharaj, he accepted me as a disciple. He marked this. This boy is interested in hearing. He does not go away. Actually, I do not know. I could not understand what he was speaking in the beginning. But still, I was very much interested in, in, interested to hear him out of curiosity or something like that. So hearing uh, irregularly, developing a taste, uh, Shravanadi Jal to hear is extremely 
um, important for the path of becoming attached to Krishna. Then uh, in Bombay, Shri Prabhupada continues. So hearing is very important thing. Not padayat yadi ratim. Vivakshena katasuya. Kata, hari kata. Therefore, our Krishna Khan's movement is to give chance to people in general hearing about Krishna. That's all. Either hearing Hare Krishna mantra or hearing Bhagavad Gita or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Anything you like. Hear about Krishna. Try to hear about Krishna in meek and humble attitude. Then gradually everything will be revealed. So this is why Prabhupada created the society to hear the holy name, to hear the glories of Krishna. And this is what we want to perfect 24 hours a day. Kirtanya Sadahari to chant, uh, to remember, uh, to glorify Krishna 24 hours a day. You can discharge your duty very nicely, but you have to see whether you are developing attachment for Krishna. Attachment means love, whether you are trying to satisfy Krishna. That is test. If that is not done, simply formulas, if you execute formulas, as I explained the other day, Niyamagra, without any satisfaction of Krishna, then Sutta Goswami says it's simply laboring and waste of time. Vishvakshena katasuya, not padaya, pratim yati, shrava eva ikevalam. So if we're not are developing attachment, mm, satisfying Krishna, then our activities mm, are simply a waste of time. So very, very strong statements, but are very instructive for us that we have a goal, we have an objective. It's not about just, you know, physical, practical service. The consciousness behind that service is very, very important. Even Prabhupada uh, very often said that even when we're rendering service, we have to be remembering Krishna. It's no use just, uh, let's say, cutting vegetables or sweeping when you're thinking of something else. The goal is to be Thinking of Krishna, the goal is to be contemplating, uh, chanting Hare Krishna, remembering Krishna, becoming attached to Krishna through that service. That's the objective. Right? Otherwise, it is a waste of time. So we want to become attached to Krishna. And Maya is so thorough, just like water. If there is one little hole, the water will just find its way immediately to that hole. And any problem in our consciousness, and the problem is that our consciousness has many holes. So we are attached to many things and we have many holes like this cup. So no matter what we put in, uh, the water will come out. So we have to amend the cup. We have to amend our consciousness mm -hmm. and we have to improve our consciousness from Maya consciousness, from I consciousness, from sense gratification consciousness, from explo exploitative consciousness uh, to Krishna consciousness. We need to bring Krishna in the center. We need to uh, put uh, Krishna and Krishna's uh, devotees in the center of our life. We see this monkey, he's putting his, he's putting his hand into the bottle to grab the banana. But the problem is, because he's attached to the banana, he cannot let go and he gets caught by the hunter because now he has to run with that jug. And because the jug is so heavy, he can't jump onto the tree. So like that, when we hold on to material attachment in this world uh, and we don't give them up, uh, then they become anchors, they become burdens. Uh, they, uh, uh, the, the weight of those attachments will drag us, will pull us down, and we will not be able to advance spiritually. So we have to let go those attachments. And we use knowledge, transcendental knowledge, to understand what is beneficial, what is not. So yes, we're giving up some banana attachments in this material world. But we're giving up banana attachments in this material world to get rasgula, to get sandesh, uh, to get shrikan, to get sweet rice, to get a higher taste, param drishtva nivartate, a taste which is far, far more super excellent. Mm -hmm. We gave the uh, example that Shil Rupa Goswami gives that even if you get Brahmananda happiness, which, you know, you can't compare that happiness 
in this material world. Uh, you don't find that happiness in this material world. So even if you get Brahmananda happy, uh, happiness from Brahman, if you multiply that by a million times, it does not equate even a fraction of devotional happiness. So that's the happiness we, uh, we, we have access to mm -hmm. simply by giving up attachment, sense gratification in this world and endeavoring for that uh, happiness which automatically comes simply through practicing devotional service. So we have to uh, light up the fire of Krishna consciousness, light up the fire of attachment to Krishna by pouring the fuel of hearing and chanting, not the water of mundane material sense attachment, sense gratificatory activities, because that will extinguish the fire. So don't light this fire of devotional service of attachment to Krishna by increase by adding fuel and water. Uh, it'll just cause, it'll just delay the process, waste time. Rather, uh, understand that yes, I, there is sacrifice, but I'm, I've tried for billions and billions and billions of lifetimes, like this monkey, to be attached to uh, bananas of this material world. And I have caused frustration and another body and another body again and again. I've been uh, consumed with birth, death, disease, and old age, life after life after life. So every sol possible solution that I could think of, right, really created a mess in my life. Now, to the Bhagavatam, we are being instructed, Sutta Goswami is revealing to us that uh, what the secret is. And now, let us accept that I have failed and let me heed the instructions of Sutta Goswami, Srila Prabhupada, and Krishna that is coming to us. And let us embrace those instructions and in this way, perfect our life. Then, in text 9, Mm -hmm. Sudha Goswami says, Dharmasya apavargasya narto narto ta yo pakalpate nartasya dharme kantasya kamo labhya hi smarta. All occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, According to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupation, occupational service, should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. So in this verse, Sutta Goswami is very wonderfully revealing to us uh, what dharma, our occupation, engagements should be used for. So. We shared this picture last time of how people have this concept of the four main goals of life, according to the Vedas, Artha, Kama, Dharma, and Moksha. And here we see that they have it incorrectly in terms of a sequence. They focusing on wealth. Why? So that they can enjoy. And then somehow other they put in Dharma, and then they say, okay, now we want to get liberation. So this sequence is completely incorrect. Uh, according to the Vedas, the sequence is supposed to be Dharma, according to your occupation, and according to the rules and conducts given in scripture, you want to apply those rules according to scripture that pleases Krishna so that you can get wealth. So Dharma, Artha, you get wealth. From that wealth, you can then get karma, sense gratification. And then after you've sufficiently enjoyed karma and are now frustrated with that sense gratification, you can now desire for liberation. So Sutta Goswami here is telling us that dharmasya yapa vargasya, all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. So instead of Dharma and uh, instead of engaging in Dharma for getting wealth, rather you should be using Dharma to get liberation. That is uh, intelligent. And uh, Naruto, Naruto, Arta, Yo, Kalpate. 
They should never be performed for material gain. You should not perform religious duties or dharma, uh, your occupational engagements uh, for material gain. Furthermore, uh, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. So this is also true even in devotional service. While we're practicing devotional service, we should not use material gain, opulence for sense gratification. And sense gratification is detrimental. Material sense gratification is detrimental to spiritual life. Prabhupada in the purport says, we have already discussed that pure devotional service to the Lord is automatically followed by perfect knowledge and detachment from material existence. But there are others who consider that all kinds of different occupational engagements, including those of religion, are meant for material gain. The general tendency of any ordinary man is any ordinary man in any part of the world is to gain some material profit in exchange for religious or any other occupational service. Even in the Vedic literatures, or for all sorts of religious performance, an allurement of material gain is offered. The mo and most people are attracted by such allurements or blessings of religiosity. Why are so-called men of religion allured by material gain? Because material gain can enable one to fulfill desires which in turn satisfy sense gratification. This cycle of occupational engagement includes so-called religiosity followed by material gain and material gain followed by fulfillment of desires. Sense gratification is the general way for all sorts of fully occupied men. But in the statement of Sutta Goswami as the verdict of the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is nullified by the present sloka. One should not engage himself in any sort of occupational service for material gain only, nor should material gain be utilized for sense gratification. How material gain should be, dis should be utilized is described as follows in the next verse. So in this verse, it is very clear that I should engage in the ultimate occupation, occupation which is devotional service, and Whatever I get from that, I should not use it for material gain. I should simply use it to offer that back to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here in this first state uh, sentence of the first line of the verse, uh, dharmasya apavargasya, this word apavarga, hmm? Prabhupada in another purport shares this word, this is a Sanskrit word, apavarga. Material life is called pavarga. So here it's explained dharmasya apavargasya. Hmm? Uh, means negation. Pavarga and you get aparvarga. Parvarga. Uh, you get pavarga and you get apavarga. Material life is pavarga because here we are uh, subject to five different states of suffering represented by the letters pa, pa, B, B, and M. P means parishram, very hard labor. So this pervarga is what material life is, and material life is uh, classified in five aspects which we experience in this material world. In Sanskrit, the words in Sanskrit, each uh, syllable in Sanskrit also has different meanings. So the word pavarga, if you break it up, uh, it's broken up into pa, ba, or pa, pa, ba, ba, and ma. And each one uh, is connected to material life. So first is pa, which means parishram, very hard labor. Then pa, where the P-H-A means fena, or foam from the mouth. You work so hard, uh, you fraught from the mouth. Uh, then, for example, sometimes we see a horse foaming at the mouth with, with heavy labor. Then you get B, means uh, bear, bear tata, disappointment. You work very hard and you get disappointed in spite of so much hard labor. At the end, we find disappointment. Then you find B, 
which means buyer of fear. In material life, one is always in the blazing fire of fear, since no one knows what will, what will happen next. And finally, ma means rutu or death. When one attempts to nullify these five different statuses of life, pa, pa, ba, ba, and ma, one achieves upper varga or liberation from the punishment of material existence. So dharmasya apabargasya, all our occupational engagement are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. That means freedom from material life. So uh, we should be cautious. And what is the caution? Prabhupada gives an example in Chaitanya Chat in Chaitanya Chattavita. However, if one goes to Mathura Mandal, Bhumi, Vrindavan, for sense gratification or to make a livelihood, he commits an offense and is condemned. Whoever does so must be penalized in his next life by becoming a hog or a monkey in Vrindavan Dam. After taking on such a body, the offender is liberated in the next life. Shila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur remarks that residing in Vrindavan with a view to enjoy sense and gratification uh, surely leads to so-called devotees to a lower species. So uh, we should be uh, cautious that uh, we, you know, there is sense gratification. And Proverbs says sense gratification is like salt. You can't have too little and you can't have too much. You just have to have the right quantity. So they, we require sense gratification in this world. Otherwise, we will not be happy. But the sense gratification that we uh, are allowed to have is in relation to Krishna. So Prabhupada would often say, for example, uh, people want to eat delicious foodstuffs. So it's, there's no restriction. Uh, you, you shouldn't negate that or stop that, but you can offer uh, some nice preparations to the Lord and then you can honor that as prasad. We have chanting and dancing. Right? We can uh, offer the chanting and dancing to the Supreme Lord. And in this way, uh, we can uh, have spiritualized sense gratification. So we can use our occupational engagements uh, to facilitate um, offering of prasadam, uh, giving and accepting prasad. Uh, to facilitate hearing and chanting, kirtan, dancing, uh, facilitate uh, worshipping the deity uh, beautifully so that uh, we can satisfy our eyes. So in this way, uh, in spiritual life, by dovetailing uh, our enjoying, enjoying tendency in the service of Krishna, that's purifying. But uh, by exploiting the resources that we get, whether in our mundane occupation or in our spiritual occupation, uh, that can be detrimental to our spiritual practice. So therefore we have to be very, very careful. There was a um, devotee, sannyasi, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Maj, uh, had some uh, wonderful, powerful sannyasis that would go out and collect for Sanskrit, for Sankitan. And this one sannyasi, he was a very, very stalwart Sankitan collector. So he would collect lots of uh, Lakshmi from donors. And he was very renounced. He would not take anything. But one day, uh, he didn't have soap, money for soap. So uh, what he you know, thought of, well, soap is few paisas. So what he'll do is he'll just take few paisa from the collection and you know, give the rest to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maj. So then uh, he, you know, gave, uh, he gave the, the Lakshmi uh, to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maj. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maj asked him uh, if he had given everything. So he said, uh, yes, you know, he gave everything. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maj asked him again, hmm, are you sure uh, you have given uh, everything? And uh, he, you know, said, "Well, uh, Guru Maj, I've, you know, just kept few paisas mm, for soap." And Shilabhakti Maj got upset mm, and told him 
uh, that give that to me. So immediately he took the few paisa for the soap and he gave it to Srila Bhakti Saran Maharaj. And immediately Srila Bhakti Saran accepted in his hand and gave it back to him and said, now you can have it. And then he told him, he said, I can digest, you cannot digest. Meaning that even the wealth that we get from uh, engaging in devotional service, uh, that wealth comes with specific karma. And if we don't engage that wealth or give it to Srila Prabhupada uh, to neutralize it and then engage in Krishna service, uh, that karma can come back to us. So therefore, in this past time, Srila Bhakti, Bhakti, Bhakti Sriramaj demonstrated that he has the power to absorb the karma, even if it was few paisas, whereas uh, we can not. So in, we should be very cautious of, that was just in, in the realm of devotional service. What to talk about in mundane material circles, we should be very, very careful. And then uh, the last verse for uh, today. Kamasya nendriya priti labo jiveta yavata jivasya tattva jignasa narto yes cheha karma bi life's desire. So we should only be engaging our occupational activities uh, for promoting devotional service and not for sense gratification. Now, in this verse is described what, uh, how can we act in this world? And it's described life's desire should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self preservation, since human, a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's work. So we should simply keep body and soul together. This is all that is required, self-preservation. And the rest of the time, we should be engaging in jivasya tattva jignasa, inquiring about the absolute truth, engaging in devotional service, hearing and chanting. Uh, this should be life's desire and life's focus. So keep body and soul uh, together. The complete, the, com, uh, the Prabhupada says, the completely bewildered material civilization is wrongly directed towards the fulfillment of desires in sense gratification. In such civilization, in all spheres of life, the ultimate end is sense gratification. In politics, social service, altruism, philanthropy, and ultimately in religion, or in even in salvation, the very same tint of sense gratification is ever increasingly predominant. So sense gratification is really a, a, a deep rooted obstacle on the path of bhakti. But the Bhagavatam says that one should not live for sense gratification. One should satisfy the sense only in as so much as required for self-preservation and not for sense gratification. Because the body is made of senses, which also require a certain amount of satisfaction. There are regulated directions for satisfaction of such senses, but the senses are not meant for unrestricted enjoyment. For example, marriage or a combination of a man with woman is necessary for progeny, but it is not meant for sense enjoyment. In the absence of voluntary restraint, there is propaganda for family planning, but foolish men do not know that family planning is automatically executed as soon as there is search after the absolute truth. So Prabhupada's given an example that the Vedas give regulated sense gratification. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, we want to uh, keep the body and soul together and all the energy, all the time, all the resources that we have mm -hmm. after that should be employed uh, in devotional service. In conclusion, Robert says, in every sphere of life, therefore, the ultimate end must be seeking after the absolute truth. And that sort of engagement will make one happy because he will be less engaged in varieties of sense gratification. And what that absolute truth is, is explained as follows 
uh, in the next verse, text 11, which we'll cover uh, next week. So Prabhupada in two lectures talks about, in, in this lecture in uh, Bombay, talks about jivasya tattva jignasa. Don't indulge in sense gratification, but live very healthy life so that you can execute Krishna consciousness. Kamasya nendriya priti jiveta ya, ya jiveta yavata jivasya tattva jignasa. Real business is jivasya. Our we living entity, our real business is tattva jignasa. Tattva, this tattva jignasa, jivasya tattva jignasa. The same thing, atato brahma jignasa and jivasya. This human form of life is especially meant for inquiring about the absolute truth, tattva jignasa. Jivasya tattva jignasa na artha yes chesa kam karma bhi. You are working so hard simply for maintaining your body. No, it is, it, it is not. You work hard. You keep yourself fit, but live for Tattva Jignasa. That is life. Tattva Jignasa. What I am? What is God? What is the material world? Why am I here? Why, am, why have I come here? Why am I put into so much trouble? These are the inquiries. Not that every day go to the market. This is not Tattva Jignasa. That is Indriya Priti, howling in the market. So. Uh, we want to keep the body fit, but uh, use our life for Tattva Jignasa, inquiry into the absolute truth. So our life has been spoiled without question of consciousness. That is our mission, that we are trying to save men from great fall down. This is the only business of human birth, um, human being, to understand his constitutional position, to understand God and the relationship with God. We are avoiding this. What is the solution? Yeah, it is clearly said. Chivasya tattva jignasa. Naruto, yes, cheha karma bhi. You work very hard, but what is your life? What is your aim of life? Simply sense gratification. It is it is falling life. Chivasya tattva jignasa. Now, what is that tattva? This that is explained next verse. Vedanti tat tattva vidas tattvam. So we should constantly inquire and learn. And Bhagavatam is Enquire Bhagavatam is asking the questions and giving the answers on Tattva uh, Jivasya Tattva Jignasa. So you cannot change uh, your material destiny. According to your karma, you're going to be destined uh, to certain enjoyment amount of happiness and certain amount of suffering. But you can change your consciousness and you can change your inquiry about Krishna. Krishna consciousness. And when you direct uh, your consciousness to Krishna and direct your inquiry in relation to Krishna, then your life is perfect. And that brings us uh, to the end of today's session. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions or comments anyone has? Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this body rights. If I have not flesh, I'm seeing right. Okay, so Mother Les says uh, in verse 8 Above the body and mind is the dormant spirit, soul, the self is the potent active principle of the body and mind question. This sounds contradictory. Please explain further with an example. So the context of the dormant spirit soul versus potent active spirit principle is understood. So the potent active principle is what gives life to this body. This body is inanimate. The body is dead, lifeless. And it seems like there's life in this body because there's an active, potent principle, which is the soul. 
but uh, it's also described that there's the dormant spirit soul. And why is the dormant spirit soul? Because the soul is sleeping. So even though the soul is an active principle, the soul is asleep. It's not active in, or it's not awake, right? It's dormant. And therefore, jeep jago, we need to wake up. If we wake up, then we'll see this active, uh, potent principle now uh, becoming awakened into its spiritual reality. So that's the difference in terms of the soul in relation to the body, right? Uh, above the body and the mind is the dormant spirit soul. So the spirit soul is there. It's above the body and the mind, but right now it's dormant in the sense that it's fast asleep of its spiritual nature, or as we mentioned, disease state, soul is sick. Right? And then in the second uh, context, probably is talking about uh, the active principle, which is really that which gives life to this body. It's the active principle. Without the soul, the mind, body are completely useless. I hope that uh, answers Mother Lash. You can let me know if that clarifies that point. Then uh, somebody said, yes, it's getting deeper and deeper. Uh, yes, we only started. Uh, the Bhagavatam uh, will become deeper and deeper. But uh, when we accept the depth and the truth, uh, then we find it will lessen the weight in this world, the burden in this world, the misery in this world. It will become less and less uh, burdensome. Okay, and you'll find that the anxiety will be completely alleviated. Mata Achana Siddhi says, Hare Krishna, can you explain further how devotion gives rise to devotion? We will discuss this also in our in the week after next, when Sudha Goswami is going to cover these different stages. So bhakti. If we take the personification of bhakti, Shimati Radhavani, when we please Shimati Radhavani, she becomes pleased. When she becomes pleased, then she bestows devotion. So that's one way of pleasing Shimati Radhavani and getting devotion. It's described that devotion is already in one's dormant within one's heart. But that dormant devotion cannot awaken without active devotion. Right? So therefore, it's described that when one practices spiritual life, sadhana bhakti, vaidhi sadhana bhakti, devotional practice, one is serving the spiritual master, one is practicing uh, devotional service, what happens is one is connected to the disciplic succession through that service. And that service, when you're connected to the discipline sex succession and offering your uh, service, your loving sentiments, goes through the discipline succession gradually, right up. For example, you offer it to your spiritual master. He offers it to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada offers to Srila Bhakti Siddhamaj. In this way, they're adding their love and devotion. It goes up, right up to Srimati Radhawani, uh, who offers it to Krishna. And then mercy, blessings, coming from Shimati Radhavani, comes down, uh, ultimately through the disciplic succession, back to you. And that uh, love, mercy, coming from Shimati Radhavani, touches your heart and increases your devotion and love. So this is how uh, devotion increases devotion. Can one fully spiritualize one material, one's material occupation? So if one, Prabhupada gives the example of a iron rod. Uh, if you take the iron rod and you place that iron rod, which is cold, into fire, and you leave it long enough in fire, 
it takes on the affinity of fire. And now if you touch it, it excess fire. So Prabhupada says, even if you take a harmonium, uh, it is made of matter, it is material. If you engage it fully in Krishna's service, it becomes spiritualized. Prabhupada was speaking and using uh, the example of the microphone. Uh, Prabhupada says, this microphone is material, but the fact that we're using it to glorify Krishna, it becomes completely spiritualized. So one's occupation mm, can be completely spiritualized if you are using your occupation completely in the service of Krishna. Prabhupada in the early days, uh, he sent his disciples to different uh, parts or, you know, in the early days because they needed money. So there was, there was no donor base. There was no congregation. There was no, you know, Debrauders. So Prabhupada told his disciples to go and find a job. And each devotee had to go and find a job. Gargam, Gargam, um, Mani, Gargam Mani Prabhu, Gargam Muni Prabhu, uh, he wrote a book called Gargam Mani. Uh, and Prabhupada says Gargam Mani can get money from anywhere. Uh, so Gargam Muni Prabhu, uh, he, Prabhupada told him his father had a big business. Uh, it was multimillionaire. So his father wanted him to come back. And Prabhupada said, you go, uh, go back, uh, go, go work in the factory and get the factory for Krishna. That was a long story, but uh, interesting how his father was trying to cohesive him to give up Krishna consciousness. Uh, he sent prostitutes, uh, put meat in the food, uh, so many ways to break, uh, break his principles, right? But Garga Muni never uh, succumbed to these allurements. So Prabhupada, uh, he sent his disciples to work in factories uh, to even learn how to uh, run you know, printing presses. Jainanda was a taxi driver. So in all of these examples, they were doing, inverted commas, a material occupation with the only focus of spreading Krishna constant, giving everything to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Jayananda was a taxi driver. All his money and whatever income he would earn, end of the month, he would come and give it to Prabhupada, a full salary. And Prabhupada would then give him something for his maintenance. So this was a taxi driver completely engaged in, a Krishna, in Krishna's service, totally liberating, totally spiritual. Mother Lash, Hare Krishna, thank you. Uh, I am aligned, thank you. I now feel as if I blink, I'll, if I blink, I will miss something sweetly important and meaningful. The beauty of Prabhupada's purpose is if you missed it, go back and read it. You won't miss it. Mm. Uh, Shamananda Prabhu says, in your presentation, we can see how much Srila Prabhupada has given us. Uh, we should cry out in gratitude to Srila Prabhupada for writing all these books, giving us lectures, letters. Thank you. Yes. Uh, if we, it's inconceivable how much Srila Prabhupada has given. And the more we continue associating with Srila Prabhupada, the more we continue reading his books, spreading Krishna consciousness, becoming Krishna conscious, the more we will realize what he has given. Mm -hmm. It's like the closer you come to Srila Prabhupada, you know, or if one, as Srila uh, Prabhupada said, uh, when you're right close to the mountain, it's very difficult to really recognize the height of the mountain, the magnitude, what's on the mountain. Mm -hmm. But as you go further and further, you begin to realize the size of the mountain. So like that, uh, as time progresses, Prabhupada says the historians will recognize the value of Krishna consciousness, what Prabhupada has really given, which will save humanity. So no doubt, uh, Prabhupada's uh, wealth of information that he has given us mm, through his lectures, so many lectures that Prabhupada has given us, uh, conversations covering all subject matters. So no doubt it is inconceivable and uh, we should consider ourselves completely blessed. And next week, uh, we will hear what we should do when we are blessed. So thank you very much for that comment. Okay, any other last comments? If not, we shall end here. Thank you very much. Uh, and we shall meet again next week. 
Shila Prabhupada ki jai kvantra chimad bhagavatam ki jai nitai go pramanande. Hari Haribo.